Hayesdale Vince, I'm the founder of Ecotricity. I love the work that we do. It's getting wind turbines into the parts of the country where they still don't exist. I'm the kind of person, it must be the way I'm built, but I resent being told or made to do anything. And so authority kind of just rubbed me up the wrong way, you know. I'm the kind of person that has to say why. I'm no Jeremy Clarkson, I want to be clear about that. But I am a bit of a petrol head. I'm a tree hugger as well. I spend my life building windmills, selling green electricity, fighting climate change. But I love driving around in fast cars and bikes. It's a contradiction, a major contradiction for me, and it's one that we all face. How do we live more sustainably? We know we have to. And how do we have fun at the same time? So I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. I want to build a sports car, out-and-out -out sports car, 0 to 60 in four seconds, more than 100 miles an hour, brilliant handling, outrageous looks, that kind of stuff. That's what it's going to be. That's the challenge, a wind-powered car. My name's Ian. I'm the project manager for this wind car. Working with these other guys in Norfolk, we have a, an engineering consultancy business. My name is Jim and I design mostly supercars. I'm pretty familiar with the Lotus. It's really going to be a problem to find space for all the batteries, find space for the motors and the controllers, and always we're fighting weight. We're taking existing components out, like the engine, the transmission, the fuel tank, the radiator, the engine wiring harness. The biggest hurdle, as I see it as a mechanical guy, is the electronic management of the battery stacks and their temperatures and controlling the environment for the batteries. My name's uh, Timothy Burt and my role is to look at the motors, batteries and battery management system. The problem with high-speed supercar, sports car type vehicles is that they tend to want to go fast and the trouble with going fast is it takes a lot of power. We have a limited amount of power available to us in the battery pack. So we're, we're struggling to make sure that we get the right mix of uh, power, efficiency and battery capacity. We've spent six weeks doing our feasibility study. Dale is coming along tomorrow. We've got three different options to present to him with different motor packages and different battery packages. And we hope to convince him that we've found all the different technologies, assessed the risks, and can offer him a recommendation of, to, of going forward. 100 to 120 miles an hour. Those are old technologies. The enormity of what you have to go for, that just, no, no, just, no, just, just an industrial type motor. We would have to trim the chassis. Meeting the horsepower, yes. Maybe you don't have access to a charger. But you'd hope to have, wouldn't you? It's not so fast. OK, good. Well, here we are at the Ecotech Centre in Norfolk. We gave the car guys the go-ahead. We chose our technology option, 100 miles an hour, 0 to 16 four seconds, and a range of about 150 miles between charging. Very interesting meeting today with the guys. We've been working on it three weeks. We've made some great progress. It's looking really exciting. We had a single motor option, a twin motor option, and a, a six motor option with four-wheel drive. And our recommendation was the twin motor option and Jim and Tim now are heavily into doing the detail. We've decided on what other pieces are redundant or that we need off the car in order to cut and shut and modify this, this chassis. Uh, deleted the gear shift system, left the handbrake system in. Taken out the ABS system because we're just going to have a simple braking system. And uh, the car's now ready to cut out the old fuel tank. Gearing the speed of the motor down to a speed that the wheels want to see for 0 to 60 acceleration and the final top speed should give us the performance we're looking for. My name's Jerry. The immediate uh, problems uh, regarding electric cars is, are the, um, the installation and packaging of all the batteries. That is absolutely fundamental to the design of, of an electric vehicle and everything else has to fit around the batteries. We've chosen these lithium polymer cocam batteries and we need 96 of these. They're going to go through here right up to where the back of the seat back is. Pushing the weight of those batteries as far forward as possible is to get enough mechanical grip, especially for slow speed corners. And it's still helping traction, it's towards the rear, but it's much more important for the safety to keep the grip on the front end. We're planning to have the car first run in October. I hope that this project spawns other cars maybe in a limited production run of, say, 20 cars or something. I want to be able to show that this battery technology is available and you can convert a vehicle to run on it and use it every day.
to have been able to make an electric car with supercar performance, because that's what it is you know, from a second and to 60, you know, it's right up there. It's pretty amazing. There's nothing to say that all transport has to be just for commuting backwards and forwards to the shops or to work. You're still allowed to have fun in a motor car, and if you can have fun in a motor car and not burn up the planet, then that's going to be good. It is a, a prototype car, a one-off crush the stereotype of electric cars and uh, you know advance the debate push the envelope make people think and um, throw down the gauntlet to those big car companies it's not just one car it starts with one car